Hi, this is Maggie. Today I'm looking at the chart of Edgar Casey, the Sleeping Prophet. Um, it was requested by Jen. She had several other ideas, um, but I liked Edgar, Edgar Casey. I've read his works when I was like 15, 16, the Sleeping Prophet. Um, many mansions. He talks about reincarnation. Um, a born healer. So Edgar Casey was born. March 18th, Pisces, 1877, in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, U.S., at 3.20 p.m. So he has a whole stellium in Pisces. Um, he has the sun in Pisces. It's in the eighth house of Scorpio. He has Saturn. He is a teacher and a healer, master, master healer in Pisces. In the seventh house, he has a whole stellium in Pisces. So the sun is in the eighth house, so Scorpio's house. So he went to enormous depth, depth in his metaphysical healing stuff that he did, reincarnation and um, reading the Akashic records. And he had access to those because, um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that later. But anyway, just trying to get through his stellium in Pisces, Sun in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, he was a master, Venus exalted in Pisces, he had universal love, um, and Mercury in Pisces, communication, it's in that, all these are in the seventh house of personal relationships, so he was meant to um, heal and communicate and be a healer. And he was like a doctor in his sleep. Um, although he was an un uneducated man, he was uh, healing people as a doctor in his sleep and then regressing them through their past lives and, you know, giving remedies that were unheard of and are unheard of even today. But, you know, he was talking about Atlantis and crystals. And today we're using crystals. Um, all kinds of stuff, magnetism, and um, yeah, so he, his north node is in Pisces as well, in the seventh house, so he was born to a life of service and healing, service and healing to serve other people, and it's interesting, he did it in his sleep, he was called the sleeping prophet, because he would go to sleep, and then he would start transcribing, you know, he had a transcriber, but he would start reading these cases, medical cases, you know, people would come to him with medical questions and, or for healing, and he would, he would heal them in, in his, I mean, he would, he would transcribe and diagnose in his sleep, uh, hence the sleeping prophet, but he had, his Neptune is in the midheaven, the ruler of Pisces, is Neptune, so he had that up in his midheaven, so he used that in his healing, and it's a sextile to his Pisces, to Venus, and um, he has a moon Neptune, so that would give it even more emotional depth, and he also has Pluto up there, Pluto's the ruler of Scorpio, and his son is in in the eighth house, so that colors it Scorpio as well, and so he Although he's a very earthy man, he has, the majority of his planets are in earth, and earth and water, no air, and a little bit of fire, but the fire he has uh, is, is Uranus and his ascendant in Leo. So he was famous for his unusual, weird, it's, some people thought he was really weird and strange. You know, and just weren't open, open, open to all these strange new ideas that he was, you know, just, and the 12th house is hidden. So, yeah, he would do this in his sleep and he had guides. He probably had spirit guides and, um, but Uranus being in fixed Leo <clears throat> is a fire sign. So that probably was very hard on his, um, your ascendant is your body, so it's probably hard on his body. His first house is Virgo, so that's 
healing. Um, and his, uh, so he used his Neptune and Pluto, you know, to go to great depths in his psychic work because they were sextile to his whole stellium in Pisces, seventh house, he, you know, healing other people and re regressing them. That's Pluto for sure. Regressing them through all these past lives. I mean, multiple past lives and reincarnations and just precise, exacting detail. I mean, there are thousands of case studies in uh, Virginia Beach, the Edgar Casey Institute. I believe his son carried on his, you know, his research. Um, so Uranus was very receptive as well. In the 12th house, it opened up other worlds, many mansions to him. So he was able to read the Akashic records. You know, he had guides. He had um, Uranus is, you know, and he probably talked about astrology as well. I, I haven't read him since I was 16, so I don't remember. But because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, it, it can get pretty far out there, you know, pretty far out there. And he was, you know, um, he was in his sleep. Twelfth house is hidden. So, yeah, he would bring out all these all these secret, unusual, you know, past lives and healing remedies and, um, yeah, in his sleep, um, in his trance state. And it was very well documented. So the, the, that made him famous. So that, that's his MC, what he was known for. So, yeah, he used to, his outer planets, his Neptune in his healing work. His Pluto for the depth, you know, Scorpio goes very, very deep into the mysteries of life, you know, and Uranus just was receptive to other worlds and added to his psychic ability because that's Pisces house, 12th house. So, um, and he has these beautiful, um, well, first of all, he has the trines between his earth, very earthy, earthy man. He has um, Jupiter planet of good luck, good fortune, expansion in his fifth house and Mars. And they're in trying to his midheaven. So that was his, his work. Um, yeah, it just expanded his work. His work lives on to this day. Um, yeah, but Jupiter, Mars, yeah, he, he hopefully had someone looking after him. After after his physical health, I recall him maybe being kind of fra frail in nature. Um, kind of frail and un uneducated, you know, for, for the stuff he was coming up with, you know. It was pretty amazing. So because he had these beautiful trines, sextiles rather, that were connected to the trines, um, it helped to bring his psychic visions down to earth. And, you know, people documented them. So I talked about his fire, just, you know, Leo ascendant and Uranus sitting on his ascendant. He'd have to watch his nerves, his nervous system, especially going into these deep trance states. Anytime you do energy work with people, it's draining. It can it can really drain you. So, um, yeah. So he he may have had a problem with his nervous system um, after doing so much healing. You know, so much healing. But that's his life's work of service. He was des destined to do that. Um, so that's his only fire. But in his Earth, um, he had Mars, Jupiter, and Capricorn. And they are trining his whole, his whole um, midheaven, the tenth house Pluto, Scorpio. But it's in Taurus. So whether he, I don't think he cared about money that much. I'm sure he made some money, but his primary focus was healing. Primary, because he has five planets, four planets, and the North Node all in Pisces. So. That was his primary focus. His ruler was up in the mid heaven. And, you know, <clears throat> Taurus is, you know, the house of assets and money. But I think that was probably secondary, you know. I think other people probably took care of that for him. 
he was so busy giving readings, life readings, that pretty much that's all he did. That's all he did. So hopefully with Uranus on his ascendant, he took care of his physical body because, I don't know, I somehow recall him being kind of, kind of frail and maybe a little short. I don't know about his health issues, but there may have been some because Pluto Pluto is squaring his Uranus. Pluto in Taurus is squaring his Uranus. You know, that's his physical body. And he, he'd always talk, he, he would say, I have the body. You know, he, he'd be talking about the body like he was somebody else's body, like he was looking up above and reading it. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty mind blowing. So yeah, all his all his earth earth trines and the sextiles just flowed with him. They just flowed. So yeah, he had Moon, Pluto, Neptune, and the MC up in the mid heaven, diagnosing people. We have the body, and. The fact that he said we, he, he had some spirit guides up there, some guides, I don't, I don't know who they were, but I think I recall him talking about that. Um, and then sun, Mercury, <clears throat> this water, sun, Mercury, Venus exalted, Saturn, the great teacher, and the North Node born to a life of service. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.